and the Board of Directors. Directors can choose to opt out of participating in the Director on Call program through a written letter to the Board President. Each month, one director will be on call to respond to conduct to conduct association business or address issues that arise when called upon by the executive officer or office staff as required. Directors may trade months if needed. If a director on call will be absent during the time on call, that director must coordinate in advance with the next director in line, who also serves as the backup, to fill during this period. Written notification must be made to the full board of deviations to the schedule. Start date for a director on call will be the day following a regular board meeting and end the following month's regular board meeting with a director on call report. Issues requiring immediate full board attention will be addressed as required. If emergent, the president may call an emergency meeting for action. Director on call will be authorized to sign transfers if all paperwork has been completed with no issues, accept givebacks if there is a zero balance on the account, serve as a mediator for member disputes if required, serve as the second signature for checks if required, along with the executive officer, be the approval authority to address individual requests for FCSA limited public access, have first right of refusal to represent the board at meetings as required, and perform other tasks as identified by the board of directors. I strongly dislike this policy resolution. Um, the first paragraph states, and I quote, the purpose of this program is to give all directors an equal opportunity to participate in the daily affairs of the association as required. Uh, not only is it not required, our governing documents state pretty plainly that if we do indeed have a general manager or a DO or an XO or whatever the title is, that we are not to be involved in the daily affairs of the association. That's not the board's job. I don't know why they put it on paper. Um, and I think it probably was a partial cause of some of the division on the past uh, board. I really do not like this. And I think we need to get rid of it. Well, well just I, before I, you hit your next... I'd, I'd like to hear from Ray. And no, just because oh. you just hit that, had that one part where they got that from. It, we do have our bylaws in here. And, and I hear it says um, Board of Directors, like, like Article 4, where it says Powers. Number B, it says to conduct, manage, and control the affairs of the business of the association. So I'm assuming just assuming that that's what they're referring to, because it is a power, but... It doesn't say daily operations. It's different. Right. The, yeah, there's oh, another oh, part of that. Oh, that, they, that that's why I wanted to bring it to the Go ahead. So that, cool. No, 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 you're not done. I like what you're going with this. I just, just, just that bullet point on that part is where, if that's, there's, there is more stuff that's probably wrong with this. Right. Okay. Yes. Sorry. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's my, that's my main thing. Like, our governing documents tell us what our job is mm -hmm. as board members. His job, should he be hired, hopefully that'll be soon, is to run the day-to-day -day operations of Fort Clark Springs. Our job is to receive reports from him, make sure he's doing a good job for the membership, and to address member concerns that you send to us via email or whatever medium you choose to get them to us. It is not to run the general manager position for the fort. We should not be up here in the office every day doing business. That's my thoughts on the subject. Brianna, you want to finish? No, 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 no. Um, oh, oh, okay. Um, and also the bylaws do also kind of lay out what what your duties are also. So and that's a public record. So I mean, it's everyone's in the association. The part that I have, um, where it's, it's inaccurate, um, like accept givebacks if there is zero balance on the account. I don't know if you guys, when Sandy was going over it, we received two givebacks because it says it has to have a zero balance. You don't get, that's not accurate. Um, and I don't understand this, and maybe you guys can tell me, have first right of refusal to represent the board at meetings as required. What does that mean? I have no idea. My guess would be meetings with outside entities like vendors or contractors. Well, or would I get the first right of refusal to? Right. So to if you're the director on call, you can go represent the 
the entirety of the board theoretically no. into this document. No, that's against the bylaws. Right. Because we're all just <laughs> right. We're, we're all a yeah. five-headed monster. I really dislike this document okay. a lot. Yes, Robert. The program itself, I think, had some some benefits because the membership liked having access to a director each month. But I believe. The first person they need to see is the general manager, executive officer, whatever you want to call the position. That's where they need to go first. And if I get a phone call after we have that position filled, that's going to be my first question is, did you talk to the GM? Once you've talked to the GM, if you still feel like your concern has not been heard or addressed, then you can go to a board member and let them know, hey, this is the issue and I don't think I was heard. From that point, we get to adjust it, address it with the GM. But I don't like the the part about as required because I think that the board should not be involved in day-to-day -day operations. I don't like second paragraph where it says, or called upon by the executive officer or office staff as required. The board, as we have said, has that one employee, and that one employee is the general manager Everything underneath the general manager is the general manager's employee, but I don't need to go talk to the ladies in the office, hear their concerns, and then advocate on their behalf. That's usurping the responsibility of the general manager that's receiving a paycheck. So, like I said, I like the fact that the membership had access to the board, but the first question when you call us or email us or whatever should be, did you talk to the GM? And then I think from that point, we and can move forward. I would like to point out that I don't believe any of us up here has been in any dearth or shortage of emails or phone calls from the membership. Y'all have no problem contacting us. <laughs> and we do share your concerns among each other whenever one of us receives an email so that everybody has visibility so that we try very hard to make sure that all concerns are addressed. Well, I agree with just pretty much everyone. I really agree with Dustin. I do not like this document. Um, it actually, if you dig deep, it violates parts of the code of ethics and parts of the responsibilities of the board. Um, I can understand why they, they did not have an EO general manager um, by the way, folks, we've had titles called Director of Operations, Executive Officer, General Manager. Um, it's been the same position, but the, the title has changed too many times to count over the last uh, three decades. So, anyway, no, I don't like it at all. For one thing, I don't think it needed to be a resolution. If they want to have a, uh, if we as a board um, want to have some sort of, um, director on call thing or uh, instructions, then we can easily send a memorandum to the general manager about how we would like to operate. Um, this, this whole resolution um, makes my skin crawl, to be honest with you. Um, uh, it also appears to be because they were in, in a way directing members to contact them because we did not have a, a GM at the time, so I think that was a good effort to give members some sort of point to contact. However, with a GM in our future, I agree that all of these things for members need to first go to the general manager. That's his job, and we stand as his backup if, uh, if a member is not satisfied, just as Robert says. So, um, we'll, there isn't a uh, this is an action item, but we'll discuss it further to see if it, um, well, for, it sounds like everybody wants to remove the resolution, but one might, we'll either decide finally whether to rewrite it or change it to something else. Um, but I anticipate in the future we will probably be removing this resolution. But again, we're not going to take a vote on it because it's simply discussion today. Um, okay. At this point, can I request a five-minute recess? Yes, absolutely. All right. So, Sorry to you at home that I have to wait while okay. I can run to the restroom. <laughs> uh, it is um, 1040, and we are taking a, we'll make it a little bit longer than that, between a five and ten minutes, depending okay. on when everybody gets back.
Thank you. Come in. Do you want to pause it for us? Anybody want to wash their hands? Uh, can you pause no, it, Ashley? I, I did have just... a, I brought some Germix to this. I don't know. Do you have to pause it or, okay. No, I, I've had well, it. Oh, I might Stop it. Stop it. Finish it. Yeah, go ahead and finish it. Yeah, I got it.